Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Sabir, and I direct events here at the Strand. We are so happy to have all of you here tonight. Before we launch into a discussion of Trixie and Katja's new book, Trixie and Katja's Guide to Modern Womanhood, I'd like to share a little bit of history about the Strand. The Strand was founded in 1927 by the Baths family over on 4th Avenue's Book Row. Stretching from Union Square to Astor Place, Book Row gradually dwindled from 48 bookstores until after 93 years, the Strand is the sole survivor, now run by third generation owner Nancy Bass Wyden. We want to thank all of you for your support. Without our loyal community of book lovers, we wouldn't be here today, and it is particularly appreciated during the middle of a pandemic. So, Tonight, we are excited to have with us Trixie Mattel and Katja Zamol de Chikopa. Trixie is the stage name of Brian Michael Fergus, an American singer, actor, drag queen, and recognized skinny legend. Trixie is the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars Season 3. He is also a Billboard Heat Seekers number one charting recording artist, a wildly successful touring act, and one half of a comic duo with Katja on YouTube. In 2019, Trixie worked the festival circuit as the subject of a bio documentary, Trixie Mattel Moving Parts, debuted his cosmetic company, Trixie Cosmetics, and released his skinny legend comedy special. 2020 finds Trixie releasing his third album, Barbara, to acclaim from Rolling Stone, Billboard, People, Entertainment Weekly, NPR, Vanity Fair, GQ, Esquire, and more. Katja Zamoldachova is the self-proclaimed sweatiest woman in show business. She's an entrepreneur, published author, and one half of the Trixie and Katya comic duo, featured, featuring on Oh, uh, and I Like to Watch. She currently lives in Los Angeles with her wonderful husband, Gerald, and their four beautiful daughters, Linda, Terry, Leslie, and Gwen. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Trixie and Katya to the stage. Hi. I love that your bio went on for five my headphones fell off and mine was 13 seconds. What? It's just listen, some people yeah. achieve certain things and other people take their time. That's the takeaway here, folks. Yep. Hello, everybody. There's 289 Hi. people here. This is an extremely intimate event. Yes, this is our I mean, um, unplugged, but yeah. we're fully plugged. Yeah, I usually stream twice a week for thousands of people, so this is this is this is um special. Yeah, this is um this is intimate. It's an intimate engagement. I look so good, girl. Future drag. Although the um the two tone the the multi tonal um, nature of my uh, hair is uh, in fully intentional. Just so you know. Oh, I love it. It's it's completely unclockable. Well, it actually is pretty unclockable. Now that it, now I see it. Okay. Yes. It's like gray, blue, violet. Yeah. By the way, let me just say this. There's 290 of you here. This is specifically for you. And yes. anybody who's screen recording this, stop now. Stop. Can because stop for you in the name of love. Special treat for you and everybody who bought this book. So yeah. um all Let it be more. exclusive and intimate. Let it be exclusive and intimate. Let's revel in this um, intimate uh, moment together. Don't be that girl posting screenshots of something you should have never recorded in the first place. It's not the look. No. But it's I, never I'll been be, the look. No, no, no. I'll go on Twitter and you can sque uh, screenshot me later. I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Okay. And to that little bitch Rachel in the chat, you really jumped out the window when you compared yourself to me. We don't look alike. We don't go to the same places. We don't even have brunch together. You really jumped out the window. You really jumped out the window. You Joanna really Scammer said you really jumped out the window once, and I'm oh like, my God. it was the funniest thing I've ever fucking heard in my life. So good. Um, oh, we've got some, wait, uh, hold on. What lipstick am I wearing? I'm wearing NARS um, liquid lipstick in Don't Stop with a NYX liner. And that was honestly, that liner. lipstick name was the only thing that kept you from, <laughs> quitting, quitting drag today. You were like, I hate, should I stop? I, 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 I pick up the lipstick. <laughs> yes. And I'm wearing, uh, this is Lipstick cream puff that comes out tomorrow. Oh, I received, ladies and gentlemen and everything else. I, I'm going to stop saying ladies and gentlemen. I'm not 400 years old. Um, also, these uh, are not gentlemen or ladies who are here. Hello. Hello. 
Um, I received my very first uh, care package from Trixie Mattel Cosmetics or Trixie Cosmetics in the mail. Um, there have been several launches, several launches of which I have not received any. Um, and I well, opened for a that while box. you had no mailing address, so Excuse let's just me? consider what's <laughs> going on here. You can send it to the the library. They know I'm there every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, I open it, and what is inside? A bunch of fucking confetti. What I do? Shove it all up my ass. Oh yeah, I saw a video of you smelling it all. I well, I'm pretty sensitive smell to great. smell. It's on your mouth. It's on your mouth. Yes, I have some I, products where it, it it tastes too chemically, and then I have some products where they over flavor it, and I'm like, I don't want a Jolly Rancher in the face either. This is um, that's why the beauty of this Nars because I previously was adored uh, Kat Von D's liquid lipstick very because it lasts all day. But guess what? It smells like cough syrup. Not into that. I'm not sick. I know. Well, girl, you remember you've been to Brazil? Yes, I sure have. Remember yeah. in Brazil, everything tastes like a cough drop. Really. Yes, every flavor in Brazil that's like berry hauls cough drops. <laughs> Everything. Menthol on them. Menthol on them. <laughs> yes. That's funny. Um, hey, guess what? We wrote a book. Oh my God, it's incredible. It's, like, it's a wonderful. It's a hard cover. Hard. Many of you, you already bought it, I guess. It's on the way to your, your homes, technically. Yeah. July 14, Bastille Day, baby. Um, I'm thrilled. Um, you guys are gonna love it. It's a, it's hefty. It's 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 substantial. I don't know hear that. if you're in it for the pictures. The pictures are, I mean, amazing. Yeah. If you're only in it for the pictures, you're you're uh, you're on the right track. Um, you won't be disappointed. Ah. Look at that. Who could fucking dare? Who would ever try? Who would try? Who we would really dare? jumped off the we jumped out a window. We jumped with that out picture. the window. <laughs> Um, and Trust then the text, traveling. I mean, the, the content we wrote is so, so funny. Um, yeah, there are words, sentences, and paragraphs in there. Mm -hmm. um, I love this. What hairstyle is right for you? Spoiler alert, most of them are bangs. Which, honestly, for drag queens, great advice. And, yeah, and for the, um, for the woman in the twilight of her life, absolutely. I mean, look at Goldie Hawn. She covers, like, 78% uh, of her face with her hair. <laughs> she looks Perfect. like... She looks like the family dog in a 90s movie where the hair's grown over the eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, but she's on to something. Um, yeah. Oh, so we have, so there are questions. We could take questions from you guys in the comments, but there are, um, there were questions submitted and vetted uh, for vulgarity. And um, so I would love yeah, to do some I of those. I find that whenever we open up the forum to questions, people really don't act right. It's What's a little chaotic. That? It's a little yeah. chaotic. <laughs> It's like, does anybody have any um, input, something to add for the conversation? And someone's like, hi, um, this question is for Katya. Will you stab me in the pussy? Yeah. Yes, yeah, like with my own leg. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Will you break my leg, mom? It's like, anybody yeah. else? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything contact? relevant to the discussion yeah. at hand? <laughs> um, I saw both of you when you were in Vegas. Oh, thank you, Jacob. Jacob said he saw us. What was that? The, the Zumanity. At, at uh, Zumanity, yeah. Mist uh, yeah, the humanity theater stage where I slipped on that. Remember that? Remember the security person was like, "Be careful, there is a step." And I was like, oh, "I think I got it." it. It's a step. Yeah, I you ate it. shit anyway. <laughs> yes, I sure did. And um, and Miss Little Sweatiest Woman in Show Business suffered greatly because because it was a Cirque du Soleil um, uh, theater. The dressing room is kept to a lovely. 800 degrees so that their muscles don't like, um, oh, that's right. you know what I mean? Because they're all naked in the show and they're all doing acrobatics. They have to stay warm. They're, Mama, it was like, it was, it was, it was a lot. I, I think I sweated my body weight off that night. Um, about your build series, the costume change killed me. Oh yeah, wasn't that a gag? I was in the middle of that interview and I, I forgot that I had worn a reveal in case the interview got, interview got spicy. And he was like, welcome to the show. And I was like, we have lots of stuff. We have reveals. I stood up and threw the costume and kept going. <laughs> oh, I love that. The I most throwaway that. reveal. Can I just share um, an image with you from the internet? Please, please. Now, what would you call that? Oh, staring down the barrel of your future, baby. I know. I think somebody, it's obviously an age filter, but sadly, it's, it's not that different. No, um, but here's the here's the fun fact. I, I I do the face app thing a lot in my spare time, and I often put my drag photos through the feminizer. Nothing changes. You said uh, it actually gets more masculine. <laughs> yeah. Well, the masculine. I mean, I would 
well, I'm not gonna do it right now. It'll take too much time. But it's like, it's, it's, it's a gag. It's a gag. I know whenever I do like the masculine filter on my gay ass, I'm always like, it's just, if you're gay, it's like, do you want to see yourself hot? I know it's like, this is <laughs> it's like, men, why can't you dress like this? Um, okay. Should we get to the questions? Oh my God. Know. Somebody, there's this, 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 this lesbian I know posted this thing like men, why can't you look like this? And I said, because I'm bald. <laughs> Although God gives all the best male haircuts to the lesbians. Oh, for sure. Truly. Who is that one? Um, who's that girl who was in uh, the Meg? Um, and she was briefly Batgirl or Batwoman. Um, uh, she was on Orange is the New Black briefly. I, I think she's a- uh... Tanya Harding? <laughs> oh, you're thinking of um, Rose. Yeah. Uh, something Rose. Yes. Riley Ruby, Rose. Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose. Riley Rose. Riley Rose. Not Riley Rose. Ruby Rose. I, I just, I want to be her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at um, lesbians are popping off in the chat. It's Ruby. Ruby. I Ruby. said it's Ruby. Ruby. Yeah. yeah, she was hot. I actually went to see the Meg in the theater. No reason. Oh. It was the worst movie. Horrible. Truly horrible. Yeah, you really know how to pick them sometimes with your I movie do. choices. You love to love a movie that was clearly going to be bad and be like, you'll never believe it. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> but I was like, giant prehistoric shark? Come on. That's, I mean, ugh. No. Like, that's the only thing we didn't get to write about in this book is prehistoric sharks. <laughs> the editor said that section has to go. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. Oh my, can we, I don't want to. You don't want to, <laughs> but you should. You just but do it. it. Can oh, everybody, I love. Can that's anybody my, fuck with me? That's no. my favorite picture of you. You're, that's my favorite solo pic of you for sure. Who and, can um, fucking take me? Yeah, it's so good. It's so good. Um, we have the same book. Actually, the fun thing is that each copy is the same. Um, you don't get that in a lot of literature these days. You, you don't get that in a lot thing. of literature. I know. We did this thing where every copy is exactly the same. And um, fun fact, on on the set of, we, we thought this was going to be like a departure from the usual kind of gig in, the, in that we would be like, you know, wearing turtlenecks at home in quiet cabins, uh, just typing away softly and not really getting in drag cut to the 47 photo shoots we we did for the book. And it was um, good old management's best. You guys don't know this in the drag industry, management is great at the good old bait and switch. The good old, good old. You guys, you guys don't wanna, let's let's have you guys do a book because you don't have to do drag. And we're like, oh my God, it's gonna be so nice to not be in drag. Plot uh, twist. 17,000 looks. 17 photo shoots. Yeah. Oh my God, I think I was in book more, I was in drag more for this book than I was, <laughs> I was for, for my own show. Yes. <laughs> Seriously, totally. but I thought it would be like Doris Claiborne. I would be like sitting on my porch, looking at yeah. an eclipse, typing, or I don't know, throwing your throwing your drunk husband into a ditch. Um, yeah. ooh, ooh. You know who you are in that movie? That old woman. Sometimes Dolores, being a high riding yeah, bitch, is the only is thing a woman has to hold on to. Also, the, yeah, you're that old woman saying, "Kill me, Dolores," like saying, "Throw me down the stairs." Oh, I'm her. Yeah, uh, that's five pins, not four, Dolores. Yeah, that. Yeah, she's nuts. Um, this is, so one of the, I, I learned something about myself. I love to learn. And uh, one thing is a, a surprising moment during one of our photo shoots was when we took this picture and I'm wearing uh, one of Trixie's dresses, Trixie's mm -hmm. gloves, and I think maybe one of your wigs. I'm not sure. That's not my wig. Is that your wig? No. Is but that your banana? That's definitely your banana. And that's, that's my banana. Yeah. That's probably yeah. one of my lip colors or something. Yeah, but I, I couldn't believe how pretty I looked um, in this softer softer um, scheme. The, it's not really your vibe, but it's great with the tattoos. Yeah, the contrast. Because contrast. you're kind of punk rock. Yeah, real cool. Um, real cool. So, wait, um, so I'm dying to get to some of these questions. Yeah, let's get into some user questions. Some of you guys tweeted us using the hashtag wow help me. Wow help me. <laughs> um, okay. Question number one comes from Rebecca Doxtator. I don't know how to say that last name. Um, what feminist icon song would best accompany this piece of literature? <sighs> oh. Ooh, I've been to Georgia and California. Um, who's that? Uh, Charlene. I've never been to me. Me. I yeah. 
I would say like, um, do they know that? Do people know that? Uh, I don't know. I don't really know. I don't know Charlene. I've never been to me. I, I know the song, but I don't. I don't know the singer. Oh yeah, it's I've never been to me. I would just say Shania. Man, I feel like a woman. Burr, burr. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> or or, um, or uh, Come to My Window by Melissa Etheridge. Oh, yes. I would dial numbers just to listen to your breath. Her album where she comes out of a lesbian, the album's called Yes, I Am. Or maybe like, um, uh, um, I've got your picture. Um, you know that Patsy Cline one? Um, I've got your picture. She's got you. Um, um, are you kidding? She's got you. Yeah. I, um, yes. I got your picture. Your picture. She's got, you got you. you. Yeah. Oh, it don't sound the sound same. The same. Da, 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 da. I love that song. Patsy yes. Klein. You, um, you know who else has let that movie where Jennifer, uh, Jessica Lange plays Patsy Klein? What? Oh, yeah. I just saw I would like to see it. <laughs> Have you seen it? Oh, yeah. Big your energy that movie. Yeah, Juliet so Lewis is fantastic. Theatrical. Yeah, Juliet Lewis is fantastic in that, isn't she? Oh, yeah, bitch. fantastic. Yeah, that scene where he's flirting with her. Ugh. She it, is I, like it, a theater actress. The way she yeah. plays, like being afraid of him and also attracted to him. Yeah, the layers are unsettling. So when she's like, "Are you the guy who's been by our house?" and she's like crying, and then she's like, "Did you kill our dog?" And then she's trying to fuck him. Then she kisses him like two minutes later, which is well, listen, a lot like relationships. Love is, is complicated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, one thing we don't talk about this in this book is fracking. <laughs> um, uh, hey, Trixie and Katya. Wait, so Alec Alexandra Lennon wants to know. Let's see. Hey, Trixie and Katya, I'm so excited to learn how to read. Me too. Um, your 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 book will be my first. Um, I know I'll be a better woman to understand when I read this book, but how do I stop being ditzy and pessimistic towards others than myself? I want to radiate confidence and self-esteem from my pussy, but I do not know how. I actually have a great suggestion. Hmm. This is something, I don't know where I heard this, but it's, you know, sometimes in life someone says something to you and it just sticks to your brain and you think Absolutely. of it all the time. Yeah, like, get um, out! Oh, yes, <laughs> get, why, why are you in my house? Um, yeah. 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 I thought I told you never come back. Uh, somebody <laughs> said to me, um, everybody's the protagonist in their own story. Which means like, people are annoying, they don't think they're being annoying. When they're wrong, they think they're right. Like, yeah. you can't really get too frustrated with those around you when you realize like, everybody thinks they're doing the right thing. Yeah. So like, that helps me never, I don't know, I think that helps me be very like, no matter what's going on. Yeah. Like, okay, well that's wrong. Yeah, um, I think, and I, yeah, like on the same reading. note, on the same note, it's like you're, so you are the, you're the, you're the main player in your play and nobody's going to give a shit about you as much as you do. Yeah. You know, so you should do that. Like you should be the one that gives a shit about you because like, that's your job. Does that make sense? Like, um, <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense. Like, okay. <laughs> Well, here's another point. So the other other point was like, and this is in terms of like, if you're feeling, if your lack of confidence has to do with um, uh, anxiety about how others perceive you, one thing, this is both good. This is both good news and bad news. Everybody's worrying about their damn selves. Girl. Everybody is too wrapped up in their own little psychodrama to give a shit about what the fuck you're doing. It is just not. It's. That so you better, you might as well just live out loud like Holly Hunter and Queen Latifah. It's like for half of us who come out to our parents and the parents are don't care. And it's like, you've lived this whole life thinking it was going to be really dramatic. And when it isn't, you're almost like, oh, yeah. I thought what is, I, I want my slap in the face. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember one time it, this was solidified in, um, you know, public speaking for everybody pretty much is a terribly uh, uh, anxiety producing um, prospect. We're uh, going around in the room and, um, and you're supposed to tell about yourself, like say uh, a couple of things, introduce yourself to the, a group of maybe 50 people. And the guy next to me, I, you know, of course I'm like unraveling and I'm like, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna say? How, is it gonna be funny? Am I gonna do it? And then the, I noticed the guy next to me is literally breaking out into a sweat. And I'm not talking, I'm talking actual beads dripping 
How long and did I, it take you to realize you were sitting next to a mirror? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. No, and, and so and all of a sudden I was like, oh. all, first of all, all the fear gone, anxiety gone. I was like, somebody is more scared than me, poof. And I was like, oh, every single person right now is wrapped up in their mind thinking about what they're gonna say, not even paying attention to the person who's talking. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that serious and no, no one cares. <laughs> that's, that's the good and the bad news. No Nobody one cares. cares. <laughs> I mean, I know we're supposed to be sad when we hear like, no one cares about you. I'm comforted by that. Me too. I'm buoyed. Yeah, I'm like, oh, thank God. You know, This is the only time somebody cares about me. Yeah, yeah. And this is intentional. This is when we put our best selves yes. forward. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, so. Um, let, me, let me do a question. Yes, please. I'm gonna do a selfie. I think you should. I think that's really cool. Ooh. Oh my God. My hair is three different colors. Do, 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 do. Public speaking is so scary, Dr. Mimi. And, and for like, I mean, imagine doing a TED talk. Imagine, imagine speaking at the Oscars, you know, like, oh. Okay. What gave you guys the motivation and determination to achieve writing a book together? Honestly, accountability with another person made it a lot easier. Yeah. Because if I was left alone to do this, I might have been, I might circle the wagon for 10 oh, come minutes on. and figure out what I was going to say. No, 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 no. That's me. I Let's let you, what, you've released 13 albums by yourself in the last six months. 14. I mean, you, yeah, you would have, you would have written the book and you would have put, passed in early. I would have just talked about it to everybody, to everybody for like five years <laughs> and not written one single sentence. That's you what think? would have happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least with you, I felt like people were definitely gonna be interested and doubly interested. Like, oh, it's a book together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we just, and also, let's be honest, we almost entirely operate our careers separately. Yeah. We almost never work together except no. on camera. So right. like this was an opportunity to work together. Um, yeah. And like, that's like, the it, main thing. It works too. And also listen, it's our first book, like writing. I've always wanted to write a book, but I did not realize how difficult it was. And if I had to write, I mean, this is not Moby Dick, right? This is not War and Peace. This is like, you know. It's the old man in the sea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but like people spend, a novelist will spend 10 years writing a book, you realize. 10 years. Yeah, we didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, we didn't do that. But like, but there's two of us. So like, and, and there's pictures. So it was manageable for a first book. It was like, okay, this is not, I was like, okay. Because sometimes- It was different. different. Because normally, like when I make my records, I make them at my own speed. And when they're done being written, I record them all at my own speed. And then I decide how to sell it and market it. This was the first time something had to be done there's a projected, there was the start where I had nothing and the projected yeah. done date. And yeah. like, you can fill in the middle at your own pace, but let's be honest, what human person is sitting down and being like, I better knock this out. I had Not so us. much, when I talk about anxiety, I would be on tour because I wrote most of it on tour. I would go to bed in the back of the bus and, the, and I would be like, like I would like I should, be, I should be I should be writing right now and I was literally pulling the covers over my head. Nobody's checking on me, of course. And but I'm just like, you know, I was like, I should be doing this. And it was a constant source of like uh, a low level hum of anxiety. For the table. first time you weren't waking up smiling. <laughs> Talking about something something somebody says that I think about all the time. It's true though, because I think my you know, all things I mean, you know, at all things being uh, relatively normal. Um, my natural baseline is it's, it's joyful exuberance. <laughs> I, <hope Woo>! <laughs> I fucking hope not, dude. I don't want get you to get it. too much joyful exuberance in your life if you know what I mean. I know, mean. hello. Okay, my name is Fiorella, and my question is for my two favorite biological women. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to branch out of my usual go-to fashion choices. you have any tips for finding new looks? Are there any tips you left out of the book that you can share now? Well, I um, the last uh, there, there was a whole section where I wrote peer, uh, um, 
haikus about menstruation because I feel like it was a book on modern womanhood. We couldn't leave that out. Um, those I'm not, I can't share them now, but we will. I will release them sometime later. Um, a little too hot for TV. Those ones were considered. Yeah. Um, but um, um, oh, I don't think I talked about um, bath salts or um, there was a couple of drugs I left out. Might as well. Ketamine. I don't think sure. I talked about ketamine. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. I think her question was about fashion. So I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> by the way everybody in the chat people are always reading me for interrupting her I know. if i Not didn't why <laughs> if i didn't i would be talking about chinese aphrodisiac cooking right now they said, they said you have any style tips you said i wish i would have written about ketamine <laughs> no they said was there anything you left out of the book oh what that's true. a yeah. question yeah uh, that's true yeah, i think baby. something we didn't, <laughs> i think something we didn't talk about is like when you're a new drag queen, you shop in a way that's very like um, bang for your buck with costumes. Yeah. What's base pieces that I can like make look different? Like a black yeah. body suit, and then mm -hmm. I can change up like the belt, so the jewelry, or the hair. Right, right, right. It's a lot like how a normal person shops too. Like, yeah. and we could have talked more, I think in the fashion section, we could have talked more about like the paper doll sort of approach of your clothing of like, okay, you have your base foundation garments, whatever and then build on whatever. Yeah, well, another thing um, I think, I don't know if we touched on this enough, it's um, I'm like, I'm more interested now in uh, sustainable fashion and um, less waste and um, also not being seduced. And I, I struggle with this sometimes, especially with the drag, not being seduced by the propaganda of labels. <laughs> I do not struggle with that. You do not struggle with that because you can't fit them labels. I'm talking about shoes. <laughs> shoes, 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 shoes. <laughs> I'm talking about shoes. Like you couldn't go buy a pair of Louboutins because you can't fit them. You know what? You're lucky I can't get my headphones back on. <laughs> I'm about to open up the library, burn it to the ground and fucking. <laughs> Take you out. Well, do people want to know the real me? I was gonna say, why don't you give them a, give the kids a little spin? <laughs> yeah, this is a front facing wig only. Well, don't worry, I asked them not to record it. And you know how <laughs> yeah. respectful people you know can be when it comes to recording things. <laughs> totally. Remember when you messaged someone and asked them to take down your show from YouTube, and you had to say like, "Sorry to inconvenience well, you." Could well, you I mean, I, know. I want you to look at yourself and understand who you are. Oh gosh! Uh, by the way, that's that's an instance where we have different approaches. You were like, "I feel so bad, like a total Karen for asking someone to take you down your show," and my comment was like, "No, fuck them. They stole from you. Beat the hell out of them. No yeah. chill. When no it comes to stealing them. property, no chill." Well, I mean, because I, I just like, yeah, I, there were certain things and I'm particular this about. If you're gonna play it, you know, in a VHS player for your family tonight after dinner. That's fine. <laughs> Invite me over. I'll bring it over. I'll play yeah. it for you. Yeah. Um, so so wait wait wait. But back to the fashion question. No, but like um, the please elaborate on the fashion in question. I I'm not a big fan of like d during the day. Like I'm not a big fan of like fads or um, I love a classic chic. Yeah, but I'm kind of basic though. I'm I'm ba you know I'm. Yeah, even out of drag, I like just like Oxford. Like flannel, yeah. Like Oxford. something, like, you know, like a button-up shirt. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. A shirt. Also, age though. Thinking about age as I like as I'm careening uh, around the corner towards forty. I'd say skidding. <laughs> <laughs> Tokyo drifting, bitch. Tokyo drifting. <laughs> Fast and the furious. Do you think oh, you're getting please. to the point where, um, when you dress like? LA, you know how like in LA, young people dress like athletic clothes? Well, do you feel athletic. like you're hashtag young or do you feel like you're hashtag old who's dressed young? No, no, so LA opened up the whole thing for me. So, okay, Boston, no fashion. Um, New York, different story. New York, when, every time I went to New York, it was always like, oh God, I felt inspired to like actually develop a sort of um, uh, a personal style and like kind of like become interested in nurturing that. And that had nothing to do with like buying expensive clothes or anything like that. It's just about an, an aesthetic, like developing an aesthetic that felt authentic. 
girl, LA, everything goes out the window. It's hot and everybody's either on their way or coming back from the gym. Yeah, literally. Everybody here acts dresses like they were at the gym or are going to the gym at some point that day. Yes, and people are either red carpet, yeah, or fucking naked, Bottom, covered naked in shit. shit. <laughs> yes, like like it's one or the other. Yeah, so people are either wearing full body makeup, like yeah. like a red carpet, red carpet. Yeah, or it's like they're not trying at all, and they want the room to know they're not trying. So yep. it's a lot of like girls in baseball caps. Mm. Very like, just so you know, I'm not dressed up. Don't judge me, you know. Yeah, which I get. Yeah, except and straight I mean, guys I, here just get away with murder because they all look like shit. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I gotta tell you, I, I mean, I love the athleisure thing. What I like, health goth. That is like my ultimate. Like I love I the health. Too. I, I mean, a goth leisure, goth leisure is so sexy to me because it's like yeah. you're ooky spooky, but you care about your body. Yes, I've been wearing a lot of like um like black jersey t-shirt dresses at home, like black leggings as pants. I've been feeling, yes, I've been feeling very, um, just, just like cross-dresser. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very like, um, yeah, that, that. Well, I love it. Very basic though, I'm very basic. I like, and then like, it depends where I'm going, you know, I dress for the occasion. If I'm going to the cosmetics yeah, you dress office, that. You dress if that. I'm going to the cosmetics office, I'm usually wearing some kind of pink, and I'm always wearing something with buttons fancy with a matching bag, real like fashion fag, um, you know. But then like most of the time, girl, if I'm just home, if I'm in drag that day, all bets are off. You're lucky I have clothes on the other eight hours of the day. Yeah. Because you know drag, once you get out of drag, you get in the shower and you're just like, no. no. For 24 hours, no. No. Although, let me tell you, quarantine has flipped the script because, um, because so much drag has just been involved from the waist up my relationship to shoes and pantyhose has changed a little bit. For example, I was in a bra and panties and Louboutins vacuuming my apartment the other day. I'm just happy someone was vacuuming that fucking place. <laughs> I don't care I what you wear while I, I threw on the good old, I threw on um, my new human, uh, shoulder length human piece. I had a bra and a, a push-up, like a, a waist, you know, a high-waisted panty. I, I slung on them pigals and I took that Dyson out and I let the apartment have it. I was gonna say, this is a shop back because the chicks <laughs> still have blood on it again. <laughs> Get all the sawdust out of here. Yeah. yeah. One of the pee jars fell out of the bed and shattered. Yeah. <laughs> One of the piss, the piss mason jars. Um, um, who did the back Questions, questions, questions. Can I do one? Major? Yeah, oh yeah, sure. Mm. Okay. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, here we go. Okay. So there we go. Okay. Um, as an Eng oh, so this is from G. Siegler, Gemma Siegler. Um, as an English major, I have to ask, what writers inspired y'all's writing style in this book? Um, hmm. Obviously, Lauren Conrad. No. Um, <laughs> Paris Hilton. Lauren <laughs> Conrad. Um, uh, and when my favorite author, I love Augustine Burroughs. I mean, I don't think I even, I didn't even try to like emulate him at all, but that's probably my favorite like yeah. personal memoirist. Like he did this book called This Is How, and it's mm. like, this is how to avoid, I forget what it's called. It's like spinsterhood being like, <laughs> like everything you want to avoid in your life. And each chapter is like, this is how to be poor. Yeah. This is how to stay fat. This is how to stay single. And it basically reads you for all the mistakes people make holding themselves back for whatever. Oh, and I was like, I liked that book because it was like basically like satire, but also like here's all the tools you have in your life and here's all the excuses you make for why you don't get from point A to point B. Yeah. Get your life, bitch. Get your life. I think my the biggest influence on me was Rosetta Stone because I had to learn English for um, sure. You, know. <laughs> you did hooked on phonics. I did, yeah. I mean, Carl Sagan. I for that. Yeah, Carl She's Sagan. Yeah, now I'm hooked on phonics. I'm in five, I'm in PA yeah, now. All step program. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I uh, there's. I, I mean, there's so Stephen many comedy King, writers. We didn't get to go on that journey. Who? I love Stephen King, but we didn't really get an opportunity to go. I would. We should. We should do a fic. We should do a fiction next. No. Okay, so I re I recently rewatched uh, the movie Carrie by Brian De Palma, a masterpiece movie. Masterpiece. Read the book. Did not hear the book. 
No. I liked it because it was less horror, first of all. It's not why I liked it, but I liked it because if you guys don't know, Carrie, the book is written a lot in like police statements, witness statements, newspaper clippings. It was like past, or like, you didn't like that, like, we find no. out about her powers because like her neighbor sees her doing something or like, no. I liked it. What? Well, so but isn't that fun? Different. Some people like things, you know, other people, they don't like them. That's fun. <laughs> you know, some people like things and other people, they don't like things. They don't like them. Yeah. Um, there's a there is a, a similar question, a good one. Uh, what are who are some of your favorite authors now? And did you have any favorite books as kids? What did you read when you were a kid? Well, did you I read um, Harry Potter? Hardy? But... Hardy... Oh. Um, <laughs> no. What did I read as a kid? When I was a really little kid, I read these old books called the Bobsy Twins, which I've come to realize were extremely racist. Oh God. Um, it was like a white a white family. It was like a book from the fifties. Uh, it was like a white family with white kids, and like yeah, it was very that. Okay. Um, yeah, but it was very almost like the Brady Bunch. And my childhood was so shitty. Reading about like rich kids was like you know aspirational. Um, yeah. Yes, I read the, the Harry Potter books obviously when I was a child. And but then, see, I'm so old. Like I I didn't have the internet. That's I realized I didn't have the internet. That's why I read so much. Oh, because you didn't have the internet. Yeah, but what did you read as a kid? So much. I read. I read so much um, from like up until college, and I stopped reading. <laughs> but yeah. I, I read tons of books. Tons of books. Like, like good. Like um, anything from classic literature, like the classics, to like uh, uh, the great American novels, and then like some Russian stuff, and then the and then the goth necrophilia, erotic. Erotic Poppy Z Bright, fucking corpses. Yeah, my pen name, fucking corpses. <laughs> Necrophilia. We we heard you. <laughs> you want to say it again? I don't think people heard you. Necrophilia, honey. Yeah. Fucking corpses. Um. Yeah. Well, that's a lot. It, it's a lot. It, and um, I read a lot. And I read all Anne Rice's books. Which, again, going back. This is I no no disrespect. Um. But I recently uh, repurchased one of the books that I remember enjoying very much in ninth, tenth grade. Not living, Mama. I don't think it's any good. Cry to well, Heaven about eunuchs in Italy. Or you know what I mean? I like, don't I know. Read, I read the Hunger Games novels when I was in college. That's young adult, though. That's and young adult. Whole, like, okay, it's a little cheese ball, but it is young adult, so whatever. It's young adult. I mean, this Cry like, to Heaven when you're like forty and you're reading. When you're like forty and you're reading Twilight and you love it, aren't you like, yeah? Why do I but, love this? But then again, it's like I also I don't I don't. It's like you shouldn't have to read Faulkner and pretend to understand it or even enjoy it though. You know, it's like you like what you like. T. I don't. Yeah, I love Stephen King and sometimes his. I mean, I love you, Stephen. I know you're in the chat. Hi, and I love his books, but sometimes it's like, all right, this section of the book is him describing the city. Quadrant by quadrant in their last history for the last hundred years. And I'm like, Mary, Mama, try I know, and write. Us, I know that you want us to care about the, the protagonist or whatever. So you're trying to make the city seem more real or whatever, but like, but then again, in it, all the, the, the history ones felt more real. I don't know. Sometimes well, I'm like, just, just go. show me the murder. Yeah, three pages of like the, the texture and, and fragrance of a bougainvillea in a goddamn like a uh, railing in New Orleans. I'm like, I don't care. I want to see vampires fucking each other. You know, it's like, yeah. Yeah. If I want to watch vampires fuck each other, I'd watch, you know, seven seasons of, um, what's, what's that? What's that? Um, Facts of Life. No. Oh, um, <laughs> True Blood. True Blood. Yeah. 12 seasons of a vampire show that, you know what that show, first of all, this isn't about books, that show, I watched the entire seven seasons. And at Me the too. end I went, I still don't know if I liked it, <laughs> but I did watch it. So I watched it all through. Yeah. I watched it all but too. You, but girl, you are big Pam energy. She's one of beloved love. Yeah, and that hot big ass Jessica. Jessica. Yeah, but I mean, the, that's a that's one of the rare. That's one of the shows. Somebody did this on Twitter. What is a show who um, that you love, but uh, the main characters are abhorrent to you that you hate? True, girl. Blood. Why do all these creatures of the night want to fuck this gap tooth waitress? Bill and Sookie, insufferable, horrible. The two she of them, can, none of horrible acting. She's a great actor. 
horrible acting. He's a great actor, horrible acting, terrible accent. Forget about everybody else. But that hot ass brother of hers. Ryan Quanton, I would let him girl. turd in my mouth. Girl. Shit girl. in my if mouth. He said, he said, I'll let you touch the stick, but you have to kill your whole family. I'd be like, do you know that I have yanked the crank to on um to the 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 dream sequence of him and um Eric Northman having uh getting oh, an yeah. girl. He goes to Equinox. Yeah. Fucking I've trample been... me out like a fucking Christmas <laughs> light, bitch. <laughs> Shut me down. Take wait, my wait, dog wait. off my wait. body. Back to books, back to books, oh, back to books. Sorry. Um uh next question. You wanna do it? Oh sure. Was it hard to find a balance between writing satire and giving genuine advice? Uh, I struggle with that on the drug section. <laughs> um, but because uh, it's, I didn't want to, you know, the tone, was, it was a hard tone to hit. Because, yeah. you know, you don't want to I mean, They, they say that comedy is the intersection between exaggeration and specificity. Hmm. So most of the things in the book that I think are the funniest are like things where it's like, oh, that really happened. Uh-huh. Like the breakup section, when I go into the way I basically stalked someone, I'm like, this. I couldn't have come up with something this funny. And I remember that playing out in real time. And, and no one thinking, said anything. It, not one word. I was like, I was like, I also was thirty pounds heavier. No one said anything. So it was a lot. Going well, on. that you know what? That's you, Mama. You get you work in a profession where you look in a mirror every single day. That's on you. But the 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 letter writing, I was like, I was like. Is that romantic or is this a psychic? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you guys don't know, in the book, there's a section about breakups where I reveal that after a guy broke up with me, I proceeded to write him a handwritten letter every day for a whole summer, which is oh, over you know 90 handwritten letters. This bitch must have thought he was trying to go to Hogwarts. Owls yeah. coming in every window, bitch. <laughs> and he, was, girl, he wasn't all that. No, of course not. But he was, in the book, I talk about how breakups are sometimes it's an excuse to it's an exercise in in playing out your own melodrama Absolutely. as an exercise in like self-indulgence like oh, oh totally. somebody doesn't love me it's like girl yeah. and then once you're over it you look back and you're like what the fuck was i, I thinking yeah. yeah yeah i should not be much alone with myself i i mean i stand by this timeline i don't know if i made it up or i heard it somewhere it, it's a little it's not very um compassionate but it's um for every year you're with somebody, you get a week of grieving. That's not enough. I think it is. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. It's um, you get a week of openly grieving. Oh, okay, sure. You can like it's the only. It's the first thing you talk about with your friends. It's the only just topic like of conversation. And while people walk by, you're sort of just. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. North Korean funeral wailing, but um, so it's two year relationship. Week three at brunch. You need to talk about something else, ho. You I mean, need to bring up another subject. Bring up something else. What did yes. you do last? You, something else. You can talk about it, but it's got to, you know what's what I mean? Not what's not clicking? Yeah. I love that meme. Change your costume. You change it around. Change it around. Um, yes. Um, but but I, to answer your question, I think that, I mean, don't you think satire is entirely truth-based? So, like, yeah. You, can't do satire without telling some truth. That's the whole point of it. Yeah, and I think like we our, our mo has always been like unintentional advice giving. Um, yeah. I think through. a good example of that would be like Michael Scott in The Office. He's an exaggeration, Steve Carell. Oh, okay. Like, who hasn't had a boss who's like a little obtuse, who says something a little racist or a little sexist, or thinks they're hilarious when they're not? It's like he takes it over the line, but that's still like a truthful character, you know? Uh huh. It's, it's a two-part question. Did writing uh, ever surprise you by being more authentic than comedic? Uh, what? Did your writing ever surprise you by ending up more authentic than comedic? I don't think those two are mutually exclusive. I think I would say, I think they may, may be sincere. <laughs> <laughs> sincere or comedic would maybe be more like the, the, the right. Like sincere or comedic. Yes. Because sometimes. I think, go ahead. No, you go ahead. So I anyways, think, I was thinking. <laughs> fucking bitch. I don't think I interrupt you. I think you're just good at talking right before I talk. 
No, I, the, um, I tried to keep it less than fear. I tried, I tried to temper it because I don't want it to be corny. I'm not trying to write anything corny. Girl, and I'm not trying to truthfully, like, no. I don't, I, I, I don't like to be intimate with pe even people I love. So I'm not looking at intimate experiences as strangers. Sorry, everyone. Too many, the earnest corny drag queen, there are enough of them, and I'm just not trying to be one of them. Mary? Mary, the drag queen who wakes up and is like, remember that you're worth something. Send. <laughs> and like, girl, deactivate, like, walk yeah. out. You ain't shit. <laughs> and then show me the whole pic, show me the beauty TikTok, or get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Third part of that I question. Mean, you both said yeah. before writing, whether it's comedy or music, um, it was easier to do in drag since there's a mask in place that encourages sincerity and vulnerability without personal risk. Did writing mm -hmm. something, did writing somewhat speculatively about experiences and women's bodies and women's experiences both afford you means to discuss real experiences of your own without being personal? I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too, because I think what we both parody well is like, we kind of make fun of the extreme obtuse expectations of women in society, yeah. Yeah. but we also worship women. We love, I mean, and we like, it's a, it's a, it's a paradox. Cause like at this at one, I mean, I love, I, I love looking like this. Yeah. But I also hate it. <laughs> I hate that women are supposed to look like this. Oh, but it I makes mean, me feel fun to take the piss out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I worship women that look like this. This is, I mean, you know, I, but at the same time, if I, if I um, were, you know, born female, whatever you want to call it, um, or if I transition, I would not, I'd probably be a fucking tomboy. I would never wear high heels. Yeah. I'd have hair, unwashed, unbrushed hair, you know, um, I would be like um, Lady of the Woods. Yeah, I don't think somebody with your hygiene issue should take on a transition right now. To be honest, that was always in the, in the, the pros and cons list that, you know, that was always like, can't keep up. <laughs> You're going to have to do the med and go to the doctors Forget and eat. Right. Eat, take yeah. injections. Mary, no, no, no. You can't be Lady of the woods. I'll, Lady. Be a new, I'll, I'll be a new gender in the woods, honey. She's a good point of reference for us. Amy Sedaris, for both of us, I think oh, her spirit oh, is in this obviously, book. obviously huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's and also us in here, that's very Amy Sedaris energy. Yeah, there were, and because I have, I adore her so much. I, I, there was a conscious effort not to just bite her style. That was always something that was like on the on the the front, um, the front of my mind it was not just to like replicate. Um, I like you, hospitality under the influence, or like simple time craft from poor people. Yeah. Well, with drag queens, we we kind of like um, we kind of the whole point of drag is to bite off in a way. Yeah, but we, but we we don't want to bite off a pair. Like we bite off you the main. It's yeah. like when people go to Drag Race and their snatch game is an SNL character. I'm like, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I like we're the we're you can't you have to take the piss out of the main. Oh. This is like big Amy Sedaris energy. That baby in the pot. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. By the way, but how much black been... eyeshadow is that? Fucking a! That is Crikey. insane. Yeah. That's a lot of eyeshadow, Mary. Is anybody watching? Is anybody watching from Australia? Any? Any? Um. Are you keen? Are you keen? Top. Yeah. Top of the day. I don't know. Top of the uh, month. Top of the day. Oh, but, oh, speaking of Amy Sedaris, um, at home with Amy Sedaris, best show on television right now. Lit. It. It's so good. Funny. Cool. It is. It is so fucking funny. Oh my God. Yeah. Season three. Drag um, queen. Hmm? She's a total drag queen. Yeah. She's the wigs. Incredible. She's just like five different characters. Um, that one, Nutmeg? Nutmeg, yeah. <laughs> so good. Um, I've said too much. I've said too much. <laughs> Patty Hogg. All right. We have, we're, we're actually running out of time, so let's do a couple more questions. Okay. You want to take the next one, number 15? Yeah, I do. Um, okay. Uh, Leslie Young wants to know, uh, what is one thing you hope women take away from reading your book? Well, to be fair, this book is called Guide to Modern Womanhood. Anybody can get this. I, I, you know, we're drag queens and identifiers for us are kind of out the window. Like, it's, whatever the modern woman. Yes. The irony um, is thick. I think what you'll get out of this is... Um, 
I think what we do well is we are very open about times that we have been wrong yeah. or over the line. Or yeah. Out of and hand. also, I think like, I, I for me, the emphasis about like, uh, especially in terms of beauty presentation, um, I don't like queer eye. Like, I'm not that, I don't want to be that gay. No, let like, me go that, live. No, 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 no. I, I don't like the premise of like, I'm a super, I'm a super sassy fag and I'm gonna tell you women how to dress like a diva. You know, that's not like my, my um, MO. Remember when we were in the beginning conversation yes. of this book and yes. I said, here's what we're not gonna do. No. We're not gonna do like 12 steps to being fierce. Yeah, no. We're not doing that. No, no, I, I was like, my hope is that, is to shine a light on the artifice of identity in Who I think you cut out. You cut out. You're cutting in and out. Can you guys? Is she cutting out and out for you guys? Oh fuck! Now I hear you. You do now. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I think you're cutting um, out. Okay. Um, but yeah, so like shining a light on um, the artifice and uh, absurdity of, it, of identity in general, but with a specialization on the feminine one. And uh, my hope is that. A, a woman or a girl can be like, okay, this is the, this, the scam. How can I cheat the system or work the scam in, in a way that suits me in my interests? And how can I let go of the, all the rest of the scam? You wanna make more money? Wear a suit. We wear a suit. <laughs> yeah. No, but not you're right. Because when we talk about hair and makeup like from a drag yeah. queen's POV, it's not that different from a woman's POV. It's smoke yeah. and mirrors. And it's about yeah. embracing whatever parts of the system. Okay, we don't we don't talk about you know why image matters in society, but we do talk about like here's some little Swiss Army knife tricks if you want to invoke that magic for yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's Use like it for this, the greater good. like the satanic witch. It's all about you know using the feminine wild. How about this? Um, like satanic invisibility, just not showing up. It's very practical. It's yeah. Very practical. It's easy. It's practical. You know? Yeah. And like when we talk about um there's I mean we have some shallow stuff like like uh how to, like different types of heels. Yeah. It's like heels are both restrictive. Yeah. Um originally, I mean, if you think of who made them and why, they're maybe not the most pro women, but I think over time they've turned into this like it's a super suit for femininity. Yeah, and they used to be worn by guys. And so now it's like, okay, if we have that information, let's embrace it, but also make yeah. fun of it. Because yeah. if you take the piss out of it, you can harness it without having to attach any strings to it. Right, and then when you're unencumbered, you can say, do I feel like a cone or a wedge? Yes. There's something I talk about in the book under the makeup chapter where I talk about like, the biggest thing about makeup is people call it a routine. And when it starts to feel routine, take a fucking break from it. Remember that you don't have to do it. No, and I wish, you know, like. Wear it because you want to wear it. I mean, I think we've all realized in quarantine, like so we all started putting makeup on and clothes and perfume on again, even if no one sees us. Yeah, my favorite my favorite scene out of like any movie was one on Batman, the original Batman with Jack Nicholson, where he uh, uh, Joker poisons all the makeup. So the newscasters are all on camera and they look haggard and i just love that really? i wish that uh, season five great. yeah <laughs> but like i remember the girls that i remember there are a couple of girls who were so cool in college at art school i idolized them they were such great artists and such cool girls not a stitch of makeup ever ever never just cool yeah. like cool clothes and like great hair or not like just whatever i just yeah or i know a lot a of thing. people don't wear much um let's say skin makeup, let's say beauty makeup, but they wear a lot of like- makeup? A lot of genital makeup? No. <laughs> like, you know, like Irene from Sugar Pill? Yes. She's kind of goth and she doesn't wear like tons of skin or like beauty makeup, uh -huh. correcting makeup. She wears uh -huh. makeup more like broad strokes, bright colors, more like accessories. Oh, yeah, like a, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a bracelet on your face. Especially in the hair and makeup industry, we get so pigeonholed into saying like, this is what you're supposed to look like. We forget that like, that you have all the power to wear it however you want or wear none of it. 
Yeah, and it's and it's tough though because like on the one hand, I I appreciate so much someone like and I'm in awe of someone like uh, Nikki De, uh, Yeager, the the Nikki tutorials. But yeah. I'm like, if you asked me to get my skin like hers, I'd jump off the roof. Why? I could do it. I could do it. That like that. Well, I that's mean, also there's some magic on that. No, but I've seen the videos. I know, but she has some magic on it. You can't tell but that. I've, her eyes are in crystal clear HD and her skin is, even before makeup, her skin is blurred. You can't tell. Not to expose her. All the people do it, but. you never seen that Tati has forehead with, like, her forehead is just gloss. Well, RuPaul does that glimmer glass on the lace because it's Cinnamon Toast Crunch, just for all you want to know. It's true. Yeah, Crunch Fair, Captain Crunch lace with a piece of Dia, mama. Yeah. Well, in any case, yeah. Technology has further, um, you know, exacerbated the technology. whole problem. We're like, yeah, it's dumb, but if you want to do it, here's a great way to do it. Yeah, be unapologetic, you know? 12 steps to being your inner diva. <laughs> how to unleash your fears? inner fears. Mm. Yeah. Wait, yeah, how to hysterectomy? Put on a dress. Like, it's like, what? Did, I don't understand that whole, like, like Feel overcome your bad. trauma. Try to throw white gloves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, unpacking, it? unpacking generational trauma. How about some stilettos? Like what? <laughs> like what the fuck? Yes. And then the way. Oh my god, I love. Did you read the way um, when we described shoes? Did you read about the way we described um, stilettos? Oh, stilettos. That was very good. Section on which heel are you, so you can look at all the different types of shoes. I love that one. Stilettos. If peep toes make your foot a slut, a stiletto makes your foot a fucking cock destroyer. <laughs> I've heard it said women don't wear makeup for men; they wear it for other women. Same with stilettos. Stilettos communicate. Yes, I am that slag you've seen in porno films. And if you so much as look at me wrong, I'll face fuck your whole family. <laughs> but like. Stilettos are fierce, but really, women wear them for themselves and for each other. Mama, I wear you them know? for myself because I don't leave the house. I don't leave the house. I wear them for the mirror. AstroTurf <laughs> Croc. Wait, what? Is, I think I have socks on. AstroTurf Croc, Mama. What about these socks? Stay cool. Wait, is it? <laughs> Got it. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, you can't see. I don't want to show it. I'm wearing, I forgot I'm wearing not the thong. I'm wearing something. I don't else. want you to show it either. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's about time. It is time. Yeah. Oh, 308 people. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And please, it's honestly, listen, I know as drag, drag, race, drag racers and drag queens in general, oftentimes put out merchandise that is questionable and often very bad. I've done it myself. But this is not. It's a great item. It'll yeah. make a great gift, and it's worth it. You can use all those other drag queens' books as paperweights to yeah. decorate this real piece of literature. Yeah, and look. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I mean, there's some really great drag books out there. Me and Katya are all, both big fans of Willems. Willems is ex exquisite. Yes. Well, well done. And But who can argue with this? Can you? I, I wouldn't like so. that. Yeah. And my favorite, actually, my favorite picture of us, Trick, is this. I love that picture. It's so God, good. I'm so lightweight. So I just really get in the air. I know. 13 pounds Look soaking wet. Drinking at home. Yeah. <laughs> Still looking glamorous in a blackout. Yeah. <clears throat> well, thank you guys for joining us today. Yeah. Oh, don't um, forget, my new cosmetic, um, I have a bunch of new makeup coming out tomorrow. I guess midnight. Oh, yeah. Three what new glosses. Lipsticks, they are beautiful, they're wonderful. And we so what do they have to do? Oh, they just have to go to trixiecosmetics.com. Everything was produced socially distant, far away. And and do you do international shipping? We do international shipping. Do you ship to the UAE, the United Arab Emirates? Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Thank you guys. Bye, Bye haters. Folks. Bye.